Living on a tight budget can be tough, but with careful planning and budgeting, you can do some seemingly impossible things like living on $500 a month. Want to find out how? Then keep watching this video. Number one, create a budget. You'll typically find creating a budget to be the foundation for living on a specific amount of money every month. And the reason is that it's very effective. There's no better way to get a full picture of your entire cash flow, which allows you to know every single detail of your spending and income. However, as great as budgets are, they don't give you the tools to actually live below $500 a month, but they will show you where you can potentially cut money. Number two, make a grocery list. After you've made a budget, you'll notice that one of the biggest expenses you have is food. Chances are you're already spending more than $500 a month on food. This can make you feel totally unmotivated, but with one simple thing, you can likely reduce this expense by half, if not more. All you need to do is start shopping with a grocery list. How many times has it happened to you that you forgot to buy something at the grocery store and have to go back the next day? But when you go back, you end up buying other things on sale. Doing this several times a week drastically increases the amount you spend at the grocery store, especially considering that you don't have to. A grocery list prevents you from making those constant trips to the store. But just because you've made a grocery list doesn't mean you won't forget. Bonus tip to really stay on top of your grocery items so you can stay well under $500 is to write down items as soon as you notice you need to restock. Since many of us are so busy, it becomes very easy to forget and not keeping track can easily lead to forgetting important items, which can lead to extra unnecessary grocery trips. Number three, use sales and coupons to your advantage. Another excellent tip for saving on the major expense that's groceries is to always use sales and coupons. At this point, most of you know how to use sales and coupons to your advantage, but you may not know how to use these tools to your best advantage. For example, just because an item is on sale doesn't mean it's a good price. For example, let's say that the price of canned beans is $1. It then goes on sale for 75 cents and you purchase several for a good deal. However, a few weeks later, the price goes up to $1.25 and then a sale shows up for $1, which was the original price, essentially making the deal ineffective. Since you're trying to live on $500 a month, paying prices like this just won't cut it. There are two things to think about when approaching sales. Firstly, inflation is a thing and prices will steadily climb along with other environmental factors, but this normally won't change from week to week. To avoid having mix-ups from week to week, it's best to keep track of prices on items you buy every single week. This way, you'll know what's actually on sale and what's not, so you can make sure you spend the least amount possible. To further lower the price of items you buy, make use of coupons. This is a very extensive topic, but it can end up with you not only getting items for free, but even getting money back for them. If you wanna find out more, check out our video on it. Number four, cut down on eating out. There's one more area that can drastically reduce your food expenses, and that's cutting down on eating out. This can be huge for those of you who eat out regularly. Unfortunately, it can be really hard to make the change from eating out less because of the convenience it provides. However, it's essential to lower the amount you eat out as much as possible if you want to live on $500 a month. A little fact is that you can save up to 400% by making meals at home instead of eating out. While this may seem impossible, it makes sense when you break it down. Firstly, you're paying for the food. Secondly, you have to pay for the service to make the food, which essentially includes everything that's needed to keep the restaurant functioning like staff, wages, equipment, utility bills, etc. Lastly, if you're paying for delivery, then you're paying the driver and gas for their car. You already pay enough for life, so why pay other people money that you've worked so hard for when you can keep it for yourself to enjoy things that you love? I get it. Cooking may not be the most enjoyable thing for some of you, but it can truly be a fun experience both for learning how to cook and enjoying wonderful meals with your family. Do you want to learn some amazing recipes that are easy to make, very tasty, and budget-friendly? Let us know in the comments below. Number five, limit your entertainment spending. Food isn't your only major expense, and if you're looking to live on $500 a month, then figuring out how to cut back on your entertainment is key. Some of these forms of entertainment may go under the radar since we're biased toward enjoying ourselves regardless of the price. Some examples are going to the bar for drinks with friends, paying hourly rates for games like billiards, going out to eat at expensive restaurants, or going out dancing at a club. 
while these are fun and by no means should be entirely cut off, you need to be mindful of just how much it costs to do these activities. I think most of us know that just going out for drinks with friends, especially if you get food and have to pay for transportation, can end up being over $100. When you're trying to live on $500 a month on top of your other expenses, it's probably not the best idea to spend $100 on entertainment. There are two ways to approach this situation. Firstly, you can squeeze it into your budget by saving up extra just for that occasion so that you don't go above $500. The other way is to find alternate forms of entertainment you and your friends can enjoy. One that I often resorted to with my friends was playing frisbee at a park nearby and enjoying food and drinks in our homes. This drastically reduced the price and we still got to have a fun time. Number six, buy used items. This is another tip that's been said over and over again, but despite its simplicity, there's more to it than it seems. But before I continue, if you want to learn more tips like the ones we've shared in this video, then subscribe to Investors Weekly because this will help us continuously make new content for you. One of the hardest things to figure out when buying used is what is actually good to buy used. The truth is that not every item is good to buy used, but there are some that are better to buy used than new. Some examples are musical instruments. A new guitar is quite an expense, and if you're looking to live below $500, you might end up breaking the budget with just one instrument. However, buying a used guitar can significantly cut the cost while giving you an amazing way to entertain yourself for cheap. Once you have an instrument, you don't have to pay again, and you get lost in the music for hours. An example for students who have to pay massive amounts of money for textbooks is to buy these used as well. When I was in school, there was an exchange store near campus that allowed students to sell their old textbooks. They also resold these textbooks for a major price cut. Number seven, take public transportation. The amount you spend on transportation is like taking up a huge portion of your expenses since you have to pay for so many different areas. For example, you have to pay for gas regularly. If you have a new car, you have to pay for the lease. You need to pay for insurance and any regular or unexpected maintenance. Gas alone is already a huge expense for most people, and it can totally derail your budget of $500 a month. For some, the best option would be to use your car as little as possible. And the best way to do this is to use local transport. There are a lot of benefits to local transport, like lowering your carbon footprint, lowering stress from driving in traffic, and making you more likely to always be to work on time. Unfortunately, this isn't an option for everyone. What if you don't have access to local transit and the distance to work may be too far to walk or bike to? One option would be to try and use carpooling. You can try to find people who go to the same area as you and either be a carpool driver asking for gas money or a carpool with someone else. Another thing you could do is to drive partway to your workplace and park at a free parking zone. Then you could bike, walk, or run the rest of the way so you limit the distance. 